Let's start off by introducing the concept of an abstract data type. Personally, when I'm thinking about how to design an algorithm for a problem, I like to reason in terms of abstract data types. Let's see how this can work with an example. Here's a leak code problem on the blind 75 list called contains duplicate. We are given an array of n numbers, and we want to determine if any value appears at least twice. Go ahead and think for a minute yourself about how you might solve this problem. I think a natural idea is to iterate through the array and for each element ai, check if we have already seen this value before. So the basic task that we have to solve is, given an ai, is it equal to any of the previous values, a0 through ai minus 1? So how can we solve this basic task? One way to accomplish this basic task is with a for loop. For j equals 0 to i minus 1, we check if aj is equal to ai. So this gives us a way to solve the whole problem, using a double for loop. In the outer loop, we iterate over each ai, and in the inner loop, we check if we have previously seen ai with this other for loop. For j equals 0 to i minus 1, we check if aj is equal to ai. What do you think about this solution? Is there a better way to solve this problem? When we look at the double for loop algorithm in a more abstract way, the role of the inner for loop is to check if we have already seen the value ai by iterating over all previous values. We are repeating a lot of work here, and it does not seem very efficient. What if we put the values into some data structure? rather than just keeping them in the array itself. Maybe we could use a data structure to make this task of checking if a value is in the data structure faster. Let's try to formalize what properties we are looking for in such a data structure. To solve the contains duplicate problem, we really just need two operations, which we might call contains and insert. Insert just means add an item to our data structure. Contains checks if a given item is already in the data structure. So we can rewrite our algorithm in terms of these two primitives. We iterate through the array. For each value, we check if we have already seen it using contains. If we have seen it, then there's a duplicate and we return true. If we haven't seen it, then we insert it into our data structure. If we finish iterating through all the elements, then there is no duplicate and we return false. So here we have a program written in these two abstract operations, contains and insert. Note that the double for loop is also an instantiation of this template. We implemented contains by, this, by an inner for loop. And we did not need to do insert because we were just using the original array as our data structure. With this generic template of contains and insert, we have formulated an abstract data type that will solve the contains duplicate problem. An abstract data type is a collection of values and the specification of operations that can be performed on these values. So in this example, the operations that we want to perform are contains and insert. It's important to keep in mind the difference between an abstract data type and a data structure. An abstract data type is like a user's manual or an API. It is written from a user's perspective. It tells you what operations you can do, but it says nothing about how those operations are implemented. That's what's nice about an ADT. It lets us abstract away from implementation details. A data structure, on the other hand, is a concrete implementation. To turn our generic template for contains duplicate into a real algorithm, we need to choose some data structure that implements contains and insert. And the efficiency of our solution will depend on the data structure that we choose. On a personal note, what I've shown you here is how I often like to think about algorithms. 
As I'm thinking about a problem, I try to come up with a solution, allowing myself special powers. These special powers are the operations of my abstract data type. Once I have a solution working with these special powers, then I see if I can think of a data structure that actually implements those special powers. Sometimes I can't, sometimes the operations are too powerful, and then the process needs to be iterated. In this course, you're going to build up your own library of abstract data types and data structures that implement them. This will give you a toolbox of special powers that you can use in designing algorithms. Later in this course, we will learn about data structures like balanced binary search trees and hash, and hash tables, which are two data stru structures which can implement contains and insert very efficiently. Next week, we will talk about how to analyze the efficiency of algorithms. But for now, let me just show you some pictures. Here is a comparison of the double for loop algorithm for contains duplicate, that's the yellow line, uh, with other approaches based on data structures. Um, so the pink line is based on a hash table and the uh, blue line is based on a balanced binary search tree. The size of the instances here range from about 8,000 to about 64,000. So you can see that choosing the right data structure can make a huge difference, right? As the input size becomes large, there's really a large gap between the double for loop algorithm and these other algorithms using hash tables or balanced binary search trees.